Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the next episode of the GNA podcast. I am your voluptuous mushroom girl, Drooby Doo. And I'm the one who puts idle stages in every dungeon he designs, Soroni. <laughs> and welcome back to the GNA podcast. So we talk about all things uh anime the good the bad and the weave how are you doing Oni? i'm doing well had a bit of a hangover but it's over now uh yeah you got drunk really quickly last night i think it's because I, I don't know i don't i don't understand why i got drunk so quickly like, last night. i was like i knew you were drunk i think the it's the gin shots said, the moment you said you were drunk you were like I did a, i'm drunk yeah I'm i got like, drunk really quick i didn't drink that much i think it was just the gin shots gin gin kind of messes me yeah. up yeah and that, I like the edible didn't hit me until like much later than I. But um, it was poorly coordinated uh, intoxication. Yeah, clearly mm-hmm. well, on both of our parts. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and that. But oh my god, that pizza! As delicious as it was, oh, I paid for it. <laughs> why did it, Why did it fuck me up so bad? It usually never messes. We're me just up. old, Drew. We're old. <laughs> <laughs> right like chicken bacon ranch was like used to be my thing now it might be like um like once uh once a quarter kind of <laughs> you know that you know that meme of uh the avatar where the it shows the fire lord and he can't get up and he's like it says my knees on top and he's like what'd you do to me and it's like ang and then it says h30 he's like i took away your bending i was me <laughs> Like yesterday, I as soon as I got out of bed, my knees were in pain. <laughs> Why? Why are your knees in Why pain? Why can't they bend? <laughs> <laughs> That's hysterical. That's probably because yeah, you, 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 girl, you sit in a chair all day. Oh uh, my knee! All right, I'm gonna start flexing my knees randomly. While I'm sitting. Yeah, no, I actually, like literally, you have to move your knees because I used to have that problem too. Because mm-hmm. I used to elevate my uh, I used to ele- like you know instead of just putting my. F- my feet like just flat on the ground. I would just um, there's like this little platform on my desk, like just like mm-hmm. it's just a few inches up from the ground. So I would just like you know put my feet up on that and kind of just lean back. So you know just to get really comfortable, like you know like I'm doing right now. The bad thing is if I stay like this forever, oh my knees just lock, <laughs> and it is it is pain. Why are knees so sensitive? What a design. Oh flaw. my god, yeah. <laughs> Right? I'm like, damn. All this dick sucking potential. <laughs> Tragically short. Sorry, honey. My knees. <laughs> You're going to have to do it standing. <laughs> right. Uh, and I'm like, I'm not. What am I, I going to do? Get knee pads? Knee pads are not comfortable to stand on, on this chair. <laughs> not stand on not, not stand, stand on this chair. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, because if you fall off, you're gonna hurt all my knees. Uh, this is an anime podcast. I yeah, swear. right. <laughs> this is an anime podcast, me neither. <laughs> uh, so pizza and and raggedy knees aside, let us get into our uh, new segment. Uh, this week in anime, I'm gonna go first because Oni <laughs> literally kept me here yes. for, for like an eternity. <laughs> As he was analyzing his news, mm-hmm. <clears throat> which his parents supposed to be really good, so can't wait for that. But until then, let's start with talking about our favorite thing, Demon Slayer, the movie. Mm. It is, according to Anime News Network, uh, projected to be the only second Japanese film ever to top U.S. weekend box office. Um, It will be the first since Pokemon the movie 21 years ago. And, and in addition, Demon Slayer also uh, beat out uh, Dragon Ball Super Brawly uh, as the number three anime film in the US. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see. So da, 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 da. it earned... So it earned uh, six point approximately six point four million dollars, um, and the Mortal Kombat, who made six point two million dollars. Um, let's see, blah 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 blah. blah. If the Demon Slayer will 
be only be the second Japanese film ever, and that's only the second anime film ever to rank one at the weekend box office in the U.S. So, yeah, they're they're they are doing numbers. Um, well, Demon Slayer earned twenty one million at the U.S. box office its first weekend. Which makes, makes excuse me, which makes it the second highest ever U.S. opening for an anime film. Mm-hmm. Uh, the highest U.S. opening for an animated film so far this year, and, and I don't think anyone's going to top it. <laughs> and Funimation's largest three-day opening weekend to date. Nice. So Demon Slayer getting all the love. I saw it uh, over the weekend, and it was really, really good, so it deserves it. Yeah, well, yes, that's right, guys. Oni is saying something good about Demon yes, Slayer. Yes, the movie was excellent. Yes, yes, yes. And then the article just goes down and really says what I said about before, how much it earned in Japan, how well it did in Japan, the records it broke in Japan, yada, yada, yada. Ironically, I've been t- hyping up this movie, and I'm, like, the last person on this planet to actually see it. And I'm <laughs> Yeah, how ironic. Uh, I know, how ironic. <laughs> I guess I'm just gonna watch it on enter site here. Mm-hmm. And I will also tell you how it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah I guess we could talk about it after I see No, because next week, um, next week for a pillow arc, I think I'm probably going to watch Yasuke. Oh yeah, we should watch that. Okay. Is the whole thing out, or is it just the first episode? The the the, part where the whole thing's out. Oh shit! Yeah, we gotta watch Yasuke. Okay. Yeah, like it's not that many episodes either, so I can mm-hmm. definitely just like just knock that out. Like the gen- like I want to watch it <laughs> regardless, <laughs> so I have no problem. I know I can just marathon it like in the one day if I wanted to, but I won't. I have to remind myself I will not do that. Yeah. I will not do that. I will Two not watch days one later, day. oh my god! I just watched all of Yasuke. No, because I'm gonna forget it. If I, <laughs> <laughs> things I marathon very quickly, I forget it immediately. Like I know, but I'll I can I'll tell you only like five things that happened. <laughs> but I was like, I remember is that it made me feel good when I watched it. <laughs> the end. <laughs> uh, so yeah, look forward to our uh, impressions of Yasuke next week. Yep, yep. But I'm done with my no- news. Um, only. Please, let's fill the tea. So, uh, there's an interesting article out by Kim Morrissey uh, on Anime News Network. Excellent job by them, uh, because they did like a whole, you know, expose on Seven um, Seven Seas. Basically, if you guys remember from a couple of months ago, Seven Seas got caught making some heavy-handed alterations to a bunch of light novels that they were translating. So, uh, Classroom of the Elite, uh, Mushoku Tensei. And I think also, yeah, uh, I'm in love with the villainess. That, if you remember that amazing show. Oh. <laughs> apparently, the light novel. <laughs> yeah, Katalina. Apparently, the light novel is a lot deeper, judging by what was omitted by Seven Seas. So, just to uh, refresh you guys, mm. there have been heavy handed. Ch- the article reads heavy handed changes across various other series come to light. Mishoku Tensei. And I'm in love with the villainess drew particularly particular scrutiny because the omitted text included sections dealing with controversial issues such as sexual assault and homophobia. Uh, it also quickly became clear that they were made without consultation with the original authors. In the case of I'm in love with the villainess, the author exp- expressed her surprise and disappointment at their fans pointed out that entire paragraphs dealing with the protagonist's reflections. <laughs> All right, that's. Properly timed. Dealing with the protagonist. <laughs> Happy Fourth of July. <laughs> Pointed out entire paragraphs dealing with the protagonist's reflections on internalized homophobia had been re- removed from the English version of Volume One. See, uh, that feels a lot like Sailor Moon esque to me, where it's like, what? Yeah, we're dealing with with homophobia, erase all that shit. They're cousins. Oh, they, 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 yeah. <laughs> it, it, oh, that like get rid of that gay shit. Yeah. Although I would say I. You know, I'll, I'll let you finish. Yeah, and in Moshoko's Tensei's case, um, uh, uh, they basically removed the incident with Rudius groping, groping Eris in her sleep and trying to take off her panties, and they downplayed uh, the rape seat, well, the mentions of rape and um, sexual assault uh, involving Paul and um, and the maid 
and some other instances like that. So basically, uh, Seven Seas came out and was just like, oh, well, you know, we don't intend to do this type of thing, and we're not going to do it again. We'll see in the future. But what I found interesting was kind of the process for how they do this. So I, I was under the impression that Seven Seas like, had a translation team, and then the team would do translation. It would be like a couple of people. And then the translation team would send it up to the editor, and the editor would check it and do revisions or whatever. And then, you know, it gets published, because that makes sense. But then I forgot we live in a shitty society where businesses do whatever makes money, not what makes sense. So yeah. basically the way they handle translations is they just hire people freelance uh, randomly. Well, I mean, I assume you apply, but they hire people freelance to do translations. Those people then se- submit the translations to editors, and the editors have, like, free control over what they do with that. They can communicate back to the translators, or they can just be like, yeah, fuck it, publish it. Or they can just remove everything and do whatever they want. So, for example, in the case of the Mushoku Tensei uh, translations, uh, the one of the translators says in a tweet, for what it's worth, I was completely blindsided by the changes to the Mushoku Tensei light novel. Uh, I knew about Volume 2's issues and was under the impression it was a layout issue, not an entire editorial change. So even the, the translators themselves don't know what the editors are removing or what they're changing. So it seems like their entire uh, their entire process is just kind of fucked. <laughs> like there's no uh, there's no um, consistency. It's just hey person translate this. All right, we'll just consider we'll edit it this as much as we want without consulting you about it or consulting the original author about it. And uh, that kind of doesn't work when it like completely uh, you know erases plot points and stuff. Yeah. Um, the author of this article uh, harkens back to four kid style censorship, which I think is fitting. Like, it may not seem like a big deal because, but the little things add up. You know, it's like it's more of the the principle of the matter. Like, really, jelly donuts? You're not just going to show a rice ball? That type of thing. Exactly. Like, yeah. are we not mature enough to handle there being a rice ball on screen? Yeah. Like, okay, so. Because, of course, we, when stuff like this happens, you go, I easily, of course, the first thing that comes to mind is literally my favorite anime ever, Karkata Sakura. Mm-hmm. Um, I get, and even with that, I, I don't want to be like, what they did was a good thing, but it's like, I understand if they're just like, I do, but I don't understand. Like I, I understand their reasoning. I just don't like it. Mm-hmm. Like they, they didn't. Like they just wanted Kaka Sakura to just be a kid show, and just a kid show. Exactly. Be very kid kid show. And they wanted just, like, a kid show that was aimed at young boys, <laughs> which is not what Card Captor Sakura was. Not even aimed at young boys per se. They just didn't want to have any like, you know, very mature. Like th- there's like very mature ambiguous themes. They, there's literally. A, a boy and a girl fighting for the affection of a of a high schooler mm-hmm. who's dating the girl's older brother. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like that. That is not exactly what I would call appropriate for children. It would be the most appropriate for children, but it's like, but that's the story. Mm-hmm. Like, like yeah, if you can, if you have to make that many changes to the story, just don't adapt the story. Like, just, just don't exactly. Yeah. Just don't just don't show the anime. Like. I know it sounds a little bit hypocritical because it's like, then, you know, someone could be like, well, then how did you find it? Mm-hmm. Blah, 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 blah. But, you know. Yeah, I feel like at that point, the story just like, it's like, like yeah, Car Captor Sakura is like completely different when you watch it in yes. Japanese. Yes, it is very, so many things, <laughs> which is why, you know, and I watch it because I'm just like, oh my God, Car, it's magic and blah, 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 blah. Like, that was cute. But then I saw it original, I'm just like, oh, this is way better. Mm-hmm. Oh, this is way better now. <laughs> because it's like, actually, like, it's, you know, there's just, there's just so much more to it. And then you just dumb it down to just sell it to kids. And I'm like, mm. yeah. Mm. Just send it, to, just, sell, just sell it to its intended audience. And if you don't have the range, just don't. <laughs> and then don't touch it. Exactly. And um, the article makes mention of, like, other things that translators deal with. Like, I know how ravenous anime fans can be. So uh, they, they mentioned that um, one issue that translators deal with is that the fans tend to be overbearing with things like uh, 
cultural references. So, for example, when if they should use like the honorifics, like should we put Onisama or just brother or whatever, <laughs> and then fans want them to use like Onisama, uh. but then the editor will be like, no, that's not the right translation. It should be brother. And I kind of fall in the line of just like what we mentioned earlier. I think last week, just put a yeah, glossary of yeah, terms. Talk- yeah, <laughs> exactly. That is exactly. I'm like this literally ties back into yeah, exactly. like we talked about in the filler arc mm-hmm. where I was like, J- just just say what it says. Like yeah, just say what it don't don't stop changing it. Just say what, <laughs> what it you, says. What are you changing? And like, and I actually I really like that because it that's like one of the things that made me want to learn Japanese. And what I really mm-hmm. liked about reading manga was like, oh, so that's what means, bro. That's cool. I didn't know that. Like, it exactly. helps you learn like, the language and learn things about the culture. Yeah, which is not a bad thing. Yeah, like, that's stop, good. Stop, 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 stop westernizing anime <laughs> so much. It's in Japanese. It's a whole <laughs> other language. If you want, if you want to change it that bad, watch the dub. Just watch the dub. It's all English, bitch. <laughs> Nothing can be English translated. And if you somehow mistranslate that, then we have a bigger issue. <laughs> on our hands yeah so yeah and i i like uh i i like that this article shed more light on it and also yeah it's not mm-hmm. necessarily the issue with the translators it's the editors and seven seasons process so don't um don't harass the translators over it they have no control over it and seven seas be nicer to your translators and like involve them in the process don't be dickheads yeah, I'm saying it in an aggressive way because the article. One thing I don't like about articles because I know they have to be objective and they have to be like not objective. What's the word? Is it objective? Yeah, I'm like I'm unbi- like, I'm biased. I'm biased. So they so unbiased. I can sense so hard that this author because there's one part where they have to like where they're playing defense or seventies, which I got kind of confused because they were like well, it's a hard job and they're trying to make money and it, so it sounded like the person was defending seventies, but then the rest of the article is just them being like, but that's not an excuse. So yeah. like I get that. <laughs> Like, they're trying to play both sides. I'm like, so I'm doing it for the writer. Because the writer clearly wants to call Seven Seas a bunch of dickheads. So this is for you, Kim. Seven Seas, you're a bunch of dickheads. Stop treating your translators like garbage. <laughs> exactly. Like, did, like, oh, imagine they got, I don't know. I feel like if you work that hard, you want to see <laughs> your, your your work. Yeah. Be done. Exactly. So it's like, just blindsided. And then, as you said, pe- people will go to their translators and be like, Mm-hmm. Why well, did you do this? And they'll be like, "What? I didn't even know that was done." I that's what me. I I assumed it was a translator. Same. But now I'm, but now I'm looking at the editors. Like <laughs> hmm, now we know that you were the bad guys all along. Yes, the true bad people have <laughs> made their appearance. Mm-hmm. No bueno. Okay. Oh my god, that was yeah. You're right. That was good. Thank mm-hmm. you for that. That piece of news. It was it was definitely worth. Yeah. Wait. Um. That being said, let's hop into our weekly reviews, starting with Roots Baskets, the final season mm-hmm. episode four. I'm tempted to tie this the episode of the week. Yay! I can hate. I can hate on uh, Akito I, again. I know, I, <laughs> Fuck uh, Akito. <laughs> Because it has, because it's like it does everything. It does the things I like. I like when it makes me hate Akito, and then I love Haru. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I love, I love Haru. And... I'm tempted because I like Rin a lot, and those have some yeah. Rin moments. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna split. I'm gonna split this mm. this, this week. Um, because yeah, it just, it just gave me what I want. Like, you know, at first it was just like, oh, do you know where Rin is? Do you know where Rin is? <laughs> You know where Ren is, and then and then the anime was like, "Hey, audience, here's where Ren is." Mm-hmm. I still had her locked up. I'm sorry, I I, I don't want a happy ending for Akito. Like, I know it's just gonna happen. It's gonna be like forgiveness and love, and Akito gets a happy ending. I don't want Akito to have a happy ending. Yeah. I, he does, yeah. She doesn't deserve a happy ending. She really doesn't. Yeah, I I. <laughs> Or, like, she could have her happy ending in jail. Like, can she be arrested and then, like, uh, uh, Shigure just goes visits her every day or something in jail? Uh, <laughs> I'll accept that, but not her getting off scot-free. Yeah, because it's, like, if she's, like, mean and, like, mm, I'm hitting people. Or, well, not even hitting people. Yeah, like she, mean, like, 
like attempts to murder people constantly. Yeah, 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 no. It was like, oh, I'm seen and I like lash out Mm -hmm. and I do stuff and yada yada yada. That would be that's one thing. But this woman like has beaten children. Yeah, I forgot she hit Kisa. I was like, oh my god. Yes. Hit Kisa. The whole thing with Hitori pushing Rin out the window. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. just like literally mind breaking Yuki. I, like she, like she's like homegirl did it all. She has a depressive rap sheet. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, 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 I don't. There's really nothing that will <laughs> can say to justify all of that. Exactly. If I was a cop, I'd be like, all right, well, Akito, we can get you for a battery, abuse, a, you hit a child, you almost killed several people multiple times. <laughs> Oh, you hit multiple children. Yeah, multiple multiple children. children. Yeah. Rid of the child. Yeah. You lock the child in your dungeon. Mm, that's a that's a crime. Period. <laughs> Period. Mm-hmm. Period. And then oh the whole scene of Haru. Like I really wanted him to beat her. Oh ass. yeah, I was like, please. Was ass, but I <laughs> Oh. God, that was so gross. Mm-hmm. I'm just, I love Haru now. I'm just, well, I loved him before, but now I love him yeah. even more. Yeah, Haru mm-hmm. was always my favorite. Like, I, like he was always ah, no, uh, not my favorite. He was second place, now you're next to Kyo. Yeah, he's second to Kyo for me. But I was just like, bro. And then she like should have lied to him. Mm-hmm. Like, damn, if you're gonna be an awful person, at least like own it, you know? And then when, when Kurdo comes out and tells uh, Haru where Rin is, and Agito's like, how did you, why are you betraying me? <laughs> <laughs> she goes crazy, and Haru look at her like, Fritz, you just lied to my face. <laughs> you, you lied to my face, and you're locking up my, my lover in a dungeon, what? <laughs> uh... <laughs> why are you betraying me? I was just trying to kill our family. <laughs> I didn't like. I, I didn't get that, but something tells me, like, I think they hinted that whatever happened between the two of them, mm-hmm. like that that bond, it's 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 uh, it's been somewhat weakened. Yeah. So I'm like, yo, is is the secret just not giving a fuck about Akito? Yo, like, just getting the her, ultimate like, skill. Fuck Agito, and you just turned Super Saiyan. <laughs> I mean, Kurano, Kurano didn't really have to do that. Kurano was just chilling, and then one day... Mm-hmm. Like, oh. <laughs> Maybe you're right, because then, yeah, Kurano, like, actually, uh, he has feelings for, um, uh, what's his, what's her name? Toru's friend now. Yeah. So maybe that just weakens. Yeah, maybe the relationships is what weakens the bonds, which also explains why. No, I, I, thought bro- no, I thought it was always broke. I thought it was always broken. Like for what? Like for Kurano? Yeah, the 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 spell the spell was generally always broken. Really? I don't remember. Yeah, I don't think it was recent. So then, yeah, it would also explain why Akito doesn't want to let anyone have relationships. Yeah. But and, yeah, and Kurano still stays with her. Mm-hmm. Like, which I. Yeah. Man, I do not get that one. <laughs> I mean, I no. I'm like, I'm trying to understand Kurano. I'm just like, bro. Like, she is like, you can act, you can actually leave. Mm-hmm. <laughs> get up and go. And I understand why she could hate you because he's like, you can just leave me for her. Mm-hmm. You you leave her for me, but you choose not to. You suck. You know what's crazy? The original Fruits Baskets... I thought the original Fruits Baskets was really good. The original Fruits Baskets is 26 wow. episodes. It was alright. Like, no, they were... <laughs> what? The original Fruits Basket was mid as fuck. Really? I like. Well, maybe because I was young when I watched it, but I really liked it. Yeah, it was like... It was... It was there. My point is, how are you going to try to cram all this in this point? This is like, th- what, the third yeah, season? Yeah. 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 <laughs> and like, I, did, I barely even... I think I knew of Akito... And Barely. Now, yeah, I forgot how the original ended. They did, did not touch was, on any of this. They did, not, they did not approach anything. Not even close. <laughs> not even close. Not even Kiel transforming into a monster. Not none of it. I think and they that did was, that. I think that was the. I think that was the ending of the of okay. Fruits Basket. Like he turned into a monster and she turned him back, and that was it. Oh okay. Oh well, that's the case. 
That's still nothing compared to that. Yeah, that is like a subplot of the the series. So yeah, that was... That was... Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, So yeah, I... Yeah, this uh, this episode was just... Man, I don't know why they just stopped after that. Did, did not people not enough people want to watch it? Oh, I guess. It was a different time. Maybe the anime adaptations were like really weird, mm-hmm. and they felt like I squeezing mean, everything into like a twenty thing. I think at that point they nothing really got second seasons or anything because oh, I remember a lot of anime from like the early two thousands were just like end, even if the ending was like an original ending or like a forced ending, yeah. like children's. Yeah. yeah. Um. Oh, and we find out why, like, Aikito fucked her up, just because Rin was trying to, Rin was trying to steal, um, Akito's father's ashes and give them to Ren. Mm-hmm. Uh, and also fuck Ren. <laughs> yeah, fuck Ren like, too. Ren's not getting off easy either. After, after I'm done beating Akito's ass, <laughs> Ren's right up, right. <laughs> yeah. Because I'm like, you gave birth to that, so. Mm-hmm. And it's clearly your fault because you're an awful person. Yeah, the only re- only reason you're not as bad as him is because you're not a major part of the plot right now, whereas he, where she is, exactly. And just oh man, the end of the scene where they're like, where he's holding or carrying her. Oh, that was so beautiful. And they just that scene where they're smiling and looking at each other. I was like, oh, bro. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> oh my gosh. Mm-mm. That was so, man. I love it. What? Y'all watch Foods Basket. Yo, when I tell you the payoff is so, it's so good. Like season mm-hmm. one, I know that one could be like, is very like, eh, it's yeah, it's all right. But season two, it like it's worth like it's worth the payoff. It's it actually is. worth the payoff because season one isn't like dog shit. No, it's just, it, it's just inconsistent. Like, there's some amazing episodes, and there's some yeah, really yeah, boring exactly. episodes. Like, some good episodes, some not. And they're just like, we're just the herd of dirt. We're just trying to introduce everything and set shit up and set the mood and premise. And in season two, they're just like, let's go! Mm-hmm. And now season three is also being pretty hard. They're like, yeah, we're continuing this ride. Oh, my God. I'm just waiting for Shigo Day to just come back and be like, yeah, you still don't want me? Fine. Mm-hmm. Um, again, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> where's Ryan? <laughs> uh, good, good, good show. All right, let's move on to My Hero Academia season five, <laughs> episode six. What's up? What you Sorry, like? do you have a mushroom in your throat? <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, that power's OP. <laughs> I, Mushroom Girl's my favorite now. I, I, I feel like her design is really awesome. It is. Also, that's like a really horrible, horrible power. Like, in a horrific sense, that is a very scary power. Yes. I mean, it's like by herself, she isn't that threatening, but like in a team battle, she's perfect. Yeah. Like, absolutely perfect. Cause it's like, damn. I'm like, damn. You're right. Spores do go in your your mouth, and she can. Put did, wait, did she put spores in his mouth, or did she actually grow a mushroom in his throat? Yeah, she grew mushrooms in his throat. Yeah, that's like death. <laughs> like you could just literally fill up his lungs with mushrooms, and he just, just dies. Yeah, it suffocates. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm recruiting her to the evil side. <laughs> you just see uh, Toga and the rest of them pull up, like, hey. We have a need for you in the League right. of Villains. Yeah. <laughs> you, you like their power. That's... This power is absolute garbage for any kind of heroic situation, but in the hands of evil. Mm-hmm. Um, I wouldn't say it stands for evil. I mean, listen, you can be on the good side and make the your villains choke. Uh, yeah, it sounds fun, though. Just inca- as opposed to just straight up murdering them. Yeah. Okay, well... I feel like it'd be very hard to control that power and not kill someone. I don't know. Hi, wow, she can control where they where they grow. Alright, but, like, having a mushroom grow anywhere inside of you is pretty, like, fatal in a lot of situations, I would assume. I mean, it's, if it's microscopic enough, like... Well, that's true. I guess you can make it really small. 
Yeah. That's not okay. fun. It's not, well, it's not fun unless you can, like, be really violent with it, all right? Uh, well, and, well, he just... I, want, <laughs> I want her to make, like, a bladed mushroom, like, decapitate somebody or something. Not a bladed mushroom. <laughs> <laughs> she can control the, the mushrooms, right? She can make the mushroom really thin and, like, sharp. I don't fucking know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> any any more agree? Um, or or you're like or you're like fighting her and you, your thought process slows down. You're like, why can't I think as fast? And she's like, I put mushrooms in your fucking brain, and you're now you're slowly dying or something. Ah, uh, it's it's very practical for evilness. Yeah, or you could just be like, they're they're in your, they grew in your lungs. Mm-hmm. You probably grew them in his lungs. Is why you couldn't breathe. Which is still horrific. That sounds very painful. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, for the rest of the episode, I feel like I didn't enjoy this episode because they really, uh, they really nerfed uh, the other team, the Team B, Class B. Like uh-huh. Momo and them. Like there were so many chances Momo and them had a chance to like win. I feel like the, the Class A won because they just made really, like Momo just made stupid choices. Or like, like what? Like... I'm making a cannon, and then I'm throwing this gift bag of all the things you guys need. I don't know. You could have just, yeah, like, I... made a gun <laughs> or some shit. Make like, a real gun. <laughs> like, yeah. It probably takes It probably takes a while to, like, make a, like... A I, I would imagine it would take a like, lot longer to make a cannon. <laughs> You're right. You could have just made a trank. Or a taser. You could have, like, just tased a... Uh, um, I think homegirl's giant... Fist of death. <laughs> I don't know. She I, first off, Momo's power. First, I, I hate that they keep making Momo lose because she has a really broken ass power. She could make literally anything. Yeah, like but I think, she could have made stun powder and threw that <laughs> at um, yeah, made stun powder. <laughs> <laughs> stun spore. Go, <laughs> Pokemon. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, when you have a power that can do literally anything, I feel like, yeah, you, you should win these kind of battles. Um, what's his name? I don't, think, I, don't think she, I don't think she can make anything organic. Is it? But she made a gun. Guns are not or- organic. Oh, I thought you said she could only make things organic. No, she can't. I'm saying she can't make things organic. Anything. Oh, that, that's a very limited. That's, that doesn't change anything. I would like most of it would be inanimate objects anyway. Yeah, like she's, she, she is not. Emiya, this is from Fate Stay Night. She is though. She can make a bunch of swords. <laughs> she can. Yeah, she, she can. She does not. Ha- she does not have the bone of her sword. Mm. There's no bone of her sword. Also, when um, what's his name? Uh, the crow guy was choking out on the mushroom. His shadow should have just like knocked out um, mushroom girl or something. Like I don't know. Like like they were just standing around after they caught the guys. I'm like, why are you standing around? Why don't you just knock them out, unconscious them or something? And put them in the in the pen when um, Invisible Girl is beating up Comic Dude, which I like, I like Comic Dude a lot. When the Invisible Girl is yeah. beating up the Comic Guy, I'm like, why don't you know like some CQC that can like take him out in one blow or something? What the fuck? You're like hitting him for like 20 minutes. Yeah, that that I will say didn't make any sense because it's like she, like even even if it's a girl, we she's a superhero. Mm-hmm. Thing. She knows how to fight because what else can she do? Yeah. Um. So yeah, so she should be like there should be ways to like, quick incapacitate people. Yeah. Basically, like, they could have Momo's team could have incapacitated them if they had incapacitated the enemies faster. None of this would have happened. Yeah, but like I said, they needed her to lose because plot. Yeah, Momo always. I hate that they make. Momo I know. Lose. I hate that they always do that to Momo. I'm like, give her. A, can she get a W for one? <laughs> I know, right? The next arc should be Momo's arc. Just that. Yep. Oh, fuck that too. Wins everything, and she. Mm-hmm. Is and she does everything. Stain okay. comes back and she's like, no, I got him. And she fucks him up. <laughs> <sighs> but yeah. Um, wait, did I have anything else to say about that episode? I don't know. I'm not really enjoying this arc. It's going on too long. I don't want to see each individual fight that they're going to do. I mean, I was fine with it. It was cool. It was. I just want, like, I want the main plot to kind of just, like, happen already, you know? I, I like, I assumed that this was just going to be, like, a two or three episode thing now like we're on we're going to episode seven now and it's still doing the little tournament thing 
Yeah, but well, we, we we shall see. Oh, oh. Also, I do like that they keep building up on the common, like the bias commentary thing. Oh yeah, I they have more and more people being coming disgruntled. <laughs> yeah, they're just gonna overthrow uh, the vampire in a second next episode. Watch. <laughs> <sighs> oh, yeah, I I enjoyed mm-hmm. the episode for what it was, but you 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 are right. It is definitely. I feel like. It's like I'm fine with it because there's like 25 episodes, so it's like I'm fine with this just being yeah. like the, getting our feet, dipping our feet in some stuff and whatever. I prefer it gets its tame now than it mm-hmm. just like goes off, as mm-hmm. opposed to the first of last season where it was just like, Wah! and then the rest of it was just like. <laughs> what are you saying? You didn't enjoy the the gentle arc? Oh sh- no, gentle arc! I actually did. Mm-hmm. I. I like the gentle arc. Um, that was amazing. Um, wasn't the main focus. They didn't do enough of gentle, so it's like, mm, yeah. that, that, that. so so that's the only reason why I, did, I didn't really love it. Yeah, but yeah, that's just my two cents. I'd rather just be very like chill now and then get than, serious later. Yeah, me personally. Mm. <sighs> All right. Um. I think we're done talking about that. So let us move on to Zombieland Saga Revenge. Um, episode four. This is my episode of the week. Um, you know what? I'll let you have that. This is a good. This is a good episode. This is a really, really good episode. I like that it actually gave um Junko some like character. Like she's always been the weakest character to me. Yeah. So I liked it. Like, it focused on Junko, and it made Junko way more likable. Like, because she was... It went through her whole, like, arc of being insecure to being super uh, protective. Exactly. And it's like... There's a lot of times where I'm like... I thought I was gonna be upset about, you know, oh my god, this is the eye thing. It's eye and eye problems. And it, I will say it was kind... It was both of them. Mm-hmm. Like, this is both of their episodes, kind of, if that makes any sense. Yeah, we had a good split between the two of them. Which I'm which I'm fine with. If mm-hmm. it's going to be two, for two episodes, they cover two people in two episodes, fine. Exactly. And we still managed to get in a lot of other uh, pretty cute scenes, like mm-hmm. Tay on the drums was great. Yeah. Um, culture, though, every scene Culture I was in is fucking gold. <laughs> it was guitar. Um, I love watching his face how she actually smashed it. <laughs> I was like, oh, not I part of the plan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you. This is a cute little cute moment with Lily because I always have to stand for Lily. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah. No, it was, it was good. It, yeah, it was just all around a really good feel-good episode. Uh, I enjoyed Iron Frill being more integrated into the plot now. Like, they're like a true rival to, uh, Fran Choo Choo. Um, even the main girl from Iron Frill, I like her as like a rival antagonist, sort of. She's um, she's interesting. I she has a she she needs to relax though. <laughs> That's her thing. She's all uptight. She's like Iron Frill will be the best fucking idol group of all time. Yeah, I'm just like idol groups aren't like this. <laughs> they are now. Move over idol groups. Not over idol. <laughs> it does get it does give the show more of like a love live kind of vibe to it now. Yeah, which I don't mind. Um, yeah, yeah. it works. It works. The songs were good. I like the. Yeah. Well, the first song was good. The second song, I think, was just a copy of the of the song they did last yeah, season. It's, it's, yeah, it's song they did. Is it, I, I like it. So they did. Isn't there? Is this their first song they did? No, it was the song they did when they got electrocuted on stage. Yeah, they just did it again. Yeah, they just did it again. And they kind of copied the same exact gimmick with them being electrocuted. Electrocuted, yeah. But that's fine. It, the the choreography is good. I didn't dislike it at all. Yeah. It was a, It was like, very I, cute to look at. Yeah. Even um, though everyone in there was just like, well, I can't believe they're using all these special effects. Oh. I'm like, bitch, there's a shooting from their finger. I don't <laughs> yeah. And then Iron Pro was like, now I gotta see what a real performance looks like. I'm like, girl, how can you beat that? Yeah, I think I want to see what their performance was. <laughs> like, what did they come out on like Gundams or something? <laughs> yeah, right, right. Do they like are they like har- like attached like harnesses and they're just gonna be like doing choreography in the air, <laughs> <laughs> like fireworks going off? Like, mm-hmm. I don't know what are you doing to, to beat that? Exactly. 
We, we electrocuted ourselves and made a impromptu light show. What are you doing? Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, that was a great episode. I, I love the characterization for Junko. I'm going to ship Junko and I now, so that's good. Oh, yeah. Oh, honey, <laughs> that, yeah, that ship came and left. <laughs> It, it, it will sail for a very long time. Yeah, and I'm hope I think Lily's episode is yes, next. I it mentioned it's next week. Oh, I'm sorry. So yeah, that's gonna be really sorry. fun. Oh, yes. <laughs> Stan Lily, mm-hmm. Lily best. Stan, Stan Luna, Stan Lily. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, great, great episode. All right, let's move on to uh. Let's move on to Nagatoro. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, episode four. I'm um, really trying not to make every thumbnail a, a like a freeze frame from this but, show, but it's but so hard. Not? How can you not? Who can? Blame? How we can't blame you. They're I'm also so- trying very hard not to name this episode the hand job, but you know we'll see. You you you. you, you uh, that would be a title too. <laughs> <laughs> I could put like a, a a little like accent over the O or something. <laughs> Not accent over the O. <laughs> Could be like uh, Henjubu. Hen Henjo Henjo. <laughs> yeah, Henjubu. Henjo. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we put a, a multiple O's. Yeah, I'll I'll do two O's with <laughs> accents. And Joob. Yep. Multiple O's. And Joob. And Joob. Um. But yeah, no, this episode was. Like the starting. This this the starting skit was so strong. Yeah, <laughs> like, I was like, "Wait, you guys are sexualizing washing your hands." They did a really good job of sexualizing washing yeah. your hands. <laughs> like you had the first one, he's like looking at her hands, and she's just like washing. I'm just like, and they made it really slutty on purpose. I'm just like, I'm like, damn, y'all really are out here trying to ruin everything. Huh? Mm-hmm. I can never wash my hands the same way again. Right, like. Ugh. But yo, uh, Sephiroth was getting horny before she even did anything. She was like literally just washing her hands, and he was like, <gasps> I, look, ah, "Look at the suds! <laughs> They're squirting everywhere." Mm-hmm. And she's like, "Oh my god, let me rub it for you, <laughs> and Job." And that's why Nagatoro is great because any other girl would have been like, "Ah, oh, baka etchy." Nagatoro was like, "Oh, we're we doing this. All right, hand <laughs> job time." I, the only thing I wish that when. He ran away. I wish it would show that he had like wet pants because he did cover up his crotch with his wet hands. With his hands, yeah. Yeah, they would have done something about that. I would have screamed. Oh, uh, imagine he ran into like her friends or something at the end of the hallway. <laughs> Just under wet pants. It was. <laughs> oh, chef's kiss. Mm-hmm. But speaking of her friends, um, they decided they're not done with him yet. And they, uh,. <laughs> Um, they started uh, teasing him. They they start doing their own teasing. Teasing. With, yeah, teasing. And by teasing, I mean sexual harassment. <laughs> Literally, just like he runs away, and they like grab him and close the door. <laughs> that scene where they grab, where she closes the door and just grabs her titties with that face. <laughs> <laughs> That is so, that is so weird. <laughs> I, need that I need to make that a guess. Yes. <laughs> oh my gosh. Like, that was so, I was like, what the fuck? That shit was so funny. That was literally at just as good as, that was like just as meme worthy as the Rimuru uh, scene <laughs> where the dude got shot through the head. Which is like, <laughs> I, I have it here somewhere. I just need to find it. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, so that that's gonna be added to the to the meme file. Yes, Sorry. added. Um. <laughs> the 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 whole bun joke with that was great. 
how it ended. Right? Yeah, uh, and actually grabbing uh, fondling Nagatoro. Well, you know, that's kind of on her. She she fucked up on that part. But Yeah, because she could just left him alone. Mm-hmm. And she was like, no. And he was like, oh, time to feel the titties <laughs> by accident. By accident. But he actually you know, he complimented her. He was like, oh, these are like the premium ones. <laughs> They're super yeah, soft. That was cute. That was cute. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Even her slapping him with the uh with the bun. I need a gift of that too. <laughs> <laughs> uh the, 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 we'll see we'll see how generous I am, I'm feeling. Oh there's right. um there's there's like these weird eye catch moments where like transitions between scenes where like seeing Senpai be like turned on by the buns with the little cherries on top. Oh my god. I was like this is so dumb. <laughs> That was so dumb. That was so dumb. <laughs> that was so dumb. I it was really like, was. Y'all are dumb for that. Y'all are dumb for that. How dare you? Oh my god. Um. So then after that, then they start working into some praise slash worship king. Where she's like, Hey, do you want to be praised? And he's like, Yeah, I want to be praised. And she's like, Yeah, praise me first, bitch. And then, you know, that's yeah, how that, it is, just, that is very uh, kinky. And I'm, like, <laughs> and I'm like, That's not really how it works. People don't have to receive praise to give praise. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, That's not it. I praise people all the time if, if I feel like they deserve it. <laughs> they do something cool, it's not necessarily really cool for me. It's for, it's for playing into the Dom role, right? She needs to yeah. her slave to praise her. I know, yeah, yeah, I'm aware. Which, which he, which he does, and I love how she blushes over like the kick. Mm-hmm. I thought that was cute too, because I think she was expecting like him to like give a uh, superficial like, compliment. Yeah. Your boobs is great, your ass mm-hmm. is great, yada yada yada. But she was like, that kick was awesome, and she's like, <gasps> you're right, it was awesome. He noticed, right? <laughs> Senpai noticed my martial arts. <laughs> Uh yeah, so that was that was fun. Yeah, I do think that the the last scene, uh, the last part, it was cute, but I think it was the weakest part of the episode for me. Yeah, it was it was it was, it was a little weak. I I would say the only reason why this shares, that's why that's why this shares the episode of the week and doesn't quite get it yeah. myself because the second part was was definitely it was sweet but on the weaker side. Mm-hmm. But like the first part was just so was so gold, yeah, yeah. Oh man! Yeah, man, we continue yeah. to be impressed by Nagatoro. Absolutely. Um, what is next? Next up is Isekai Mile. Uh, Isekai Mile Omega, episode four. Yes, this was a I, random episode. Did I, don't know, I think all the episodes are just random as fuck? All right, but this the whole idol thing is really fucking out of nowhere. <laughs> I mean, that's how he... <laughs> that's how he designed it. Listen, I, I'll be honest. I fell asleep watching this episode, like, the first... I saw it twice. I watched it the first time, like, last night, like, after we did the stream. And I was already, just, like, you know, sleepy. So I, like, fell asleep for, like, five minutes. And then I woke up. Like, I, I fell asleep while they were answering questions. And then I wake up, and they're literally in the middle of an idol performance. And I was like, what the fuck am I watching? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no. I was so oh, confused. Was so, it was so first of all, that was so random how they were like, Yep, yeah, this is a we have to give them a show and then they just had like this stupid scene where they're like training. Mm-hmm. They like, gave them a yeah, whole song and everything, this thing. That was <laughs> I was like, How'd you guys train our right, that quickly? And more importantly, why is he si- why is he part of it if he's not even singing? He he's the producer and the, uh, also part of the idol troupe. <laughs> Yeah, I was like, you know, you didn't have to be there. I would just prefer the poor girls because there's just, uh, eh, like, why are you there, girl? Um, but yeah, plot wise, we did see a, li- a little bit more of, um, uh, flying badass chick with a gun, which was nice. I, it was so funny how he literally almost got himself killed. <laughs> I am the demon lord. <laughs> I'm like, bitch, what did we just tell you? Yeah. Say anything. Rambo's like, oh my god, this idiot. Yeah, Rambo. <laughs> this fucking idiot. 
gonna kill uh, us all. I like that he keeps using explosion. I, I don't know if it's a direct, if it's meant to reference um, right, um, Kono Shibu or not, I, but I, I appreciate it. I feel like it, it is. Um, uh, what's his name from the first episode? Came back, throwaway villain. Yeah. Um, and Horn sacrifices herself to save Lumakina. Mm-hmm. I'm sure uh, Diablo's gonna save her next episode. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Oh, uh, could you imagine if she just died? <laughs> That'd be pretty wild and in, in, in yeah. out of character for the show. It would be. Well, at least something would happen. Maybe. Um, I would say. Wait, did you already mention that? I was gonna say that the Remen Shara banter was cute this episode. Did you already say that? Point that out. The what? The, the Remen Shara. Yeah, Roman Shiro. Oh, I didn't point that out yet. No. Yeah, no. I always I think find it really cute. cute. Yeah, it was it was really cute. They're talking about whether they like their meat cooked or raw. Mm-hmm. Rem is right, by the way. I don't want it raw, but like, let's go. Shiro's was like overdone. Yeah. Mm, I, no. Mm-mm, not making that joke. Um. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This this show. It. it, it so this is definitely going to be, from what I can tell, the weakest show of this, se- of this season that we cover. Not that it's bad, it's just... I wouldn't disagree with that. It's because I, like... Compared to everything Yeah, else. compared to everything else, this is a relatively strong season, at least as far as we're covering. Yeah. Um, it's, just a, it's just a cutesy, feel-good, etchy show, you know? Yeah. Throw it in there to, to, to mellow us out in between fruits baskets and... Uh, Hero Academia when the action starts going. Exactly. So, so yeah, I appreciate it for that. Yeah, yeah. So if I don't have much, if I don't have much to say about it, it's just because. Oh my like, god, it's only ten episodes. Oh, thank God. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> no, because it's like when I watch it, it's just like I feel like I don't have a lot to say. It's just like you know, oh, this happened, and, oh, mm. this, and then that's it. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's not one of those animes that inspires. Conversation. Uh, what we're not gonna have thought provoking conversation about uh the bus sizes of the characters. I did all right. Well, speaking on that topic, I did appreciate that uh when they they did the zoom in for the fan service scene, they like sh- they zoomed in on uh uh the church girl's breasts because they're huge. And they, they zoomed in on Shira's breasts, and then they went to Rem's ass because they're like she's. Like, <laughs> 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 we got we got to go to her biggest asset. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. No, it was. It was. Eve good, indeed. Um. Um. But yeah, that's all I have to say about it's came out. Let's move on to. Uh, Sentoin Hakenshimas episode five. Um, full disclosure, I was definitely a little drifty on this one, because, like, that's when my allergies really started kicking my ass mm. around Sentuin. Uh, but I know enough that I know, to know that this is a funny episode. <laughs> <laughs> it was a pretty funny episode. I think this show does a decent job of, like, Maintaining the humor while like advancing, like God. having the plot. Yeah. Yes, um, it does both very well. The the whole I do like that Snow didn't like immediately turn him in. She was just like, "All right," just, like she gives him infinite chances to leave, no matter what he yeah. does. Uh, even when he runs around the fucking <laughs> the town, exposing no, himself. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe that. I mean, I thought he was like, oh, I guess he's just doing it to like make sure they get home safely. And he's like, gained evil points. I'm, oh, like, like, I'm like, oh, well, this makes sense. <laughs> yeah, I, the, I'm in my mind. I'm going to see he's doing both. Yeah, when you ran into the one darkness uh, version, dark- version of darkness in this world. <laughs> yeah, dark- darkness version, version uh, zero. Mm-hmm. Oh, I tripped and broke my ankle. I can't move. <laughs> Oh no, he's gonna drag me away and have his way with me. <laughs> he's like, yeah, I'm probably waiting for this moment. I was just like, oh my god, this is actually darkness. Yeah. <laughs> this is this is prototype darkness. Uh and then Snow and Rose finding him and they're just like, What the fuck are you doing? 
Yeah. <laughs> and I also like that his, his Zipper Man name just followed him throughout the entire episode after that. Every time he yeah. interacted with somebody, like, oh my god, Zipper Man. <laughs> yeah, and then they all just clowned him. Mm-hmm. You're like, haha, <laughs> Zipper Man. <laughs> um, I appreciated that the actual character development we got for uh, Alice this episode. It wasn't, like, super crazy, but, like, seeing her actually... Uh, try to care while being snarky. Still try to care about um, supporting uh, Agent 6 and making sure that everything works out in the end. I think it was really cute. Like, it shows that she's, you know, she cares about not only Agent 6, but, like, everyone else as well and, like, their well-being and not just, like, well, fuck it, we're all they're all gonna die. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's what she's programmed to do. Eh, she's programmed to do the mission. Oh, oh, you mean like oh, protecting them from the, the demon lords? Yeah, course. like she planted the minefield and everything. Mm. And she gave him an excuse to because Agent Six was just like, "Let's just leave" or whatever. And she's like, "Oh well, it takes a month, and then you know we can do this in the meantime." It yeah. wouldn't look good if your subordinates died. So she helps in her own little way. I think that's yeah. cute. Um. Who else was who else got that? I didn't I wish Rose and, and Grimm got more screen time. They didn't really do anything this episode. Yeah, not really. <laughs> that one moment when they were just like Snow was like, We're gonna fight, right? And they were like, mm. Mm, nah. Uh <laughs> Princess came back and she had her little moments that were nice and funny. <laughs> when she's trying to do the magic and they're not paying attention to her. <laughs> they're like, wait, do it again. I missed it. Oh, yeah, that's just someone like a puddle. <laughs> And they're like, oh, yeah, we didn't see that. Try to do it again. <laughs> um, but, yeah, no, this episode was cute. I, I appreciated it. I liked the little character development they got. They they kept it, uh, the plot going forward. And I'm interested in seeing what uh, happens, specifically what happens with, uh, what's her name, Heine? Heine? The demon lord? Oh, the demon yeah. General. They got the blown up. Cool. Yeah. Well, I'd like oh, I'm trying to do our magic. And you just see our explosion in the distance. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I didn't like that little touch. <laughs> like they didn't show her blow up, but they showed the smoke in the background. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's like uh, it's like one of those things. Like if you, you like you, if you can if you can do some some math, you can can, <laughs> you can kind of glean at what happened. Yeah, it was a lot of it was a lot of cute moments here and there. But yeah, I want to see what happens to her. I have a feeling. Obviously, she's probably going to join them at some point. So, I'm curious. I need more Heine. Yes, I, I, like, I also am a big fan of the Heine as well. <laughs> I would like more of it. Post haste. Alright, and for our last episode, we have Kumo Deska Nanika, episode 16. Yes. Um... I feel like I come full circle, because I'm just like, whenever they talk, whenever they show the, uh, the kids, I'm like, get back to Kumiko. <laughs> I want to see more yeah, spider. I'm not going to lie, because they just dropped bomb on bomb on bomb about mm-hmm. stuff. Like, the actual plot relevant shit. Like, Happened. Every- <laughs> and then they're just like, hey, we're here on the run. We're going to go swimming. We're going to have our nice swimsuits. Mm. Although I do like that Faye became human. That was cute. Yeah. Faye becoming a humanoid is cute. Um, yeah, it's not, man, it's not that their story isn't important because it is relevant to everything. It but. is. It's just that we're doing so much with Kumiko. Like, yeah, she's literally immortal now. That was the way yeah. to start off the episode. Um, she got all these new powers and she was talking to Admin D about like more of the secrets of the world. And then the mid, mid bombshells, they were like, oh, let's take a look at what's going on with the hero and his adventures. I'm like, oh. Uh, the fact is, it wasn't anything that important compared to what we were exactly. watching. Exactly. I do like that parallels, like, because they're in the same general area. They're both by the lake in different time periods. Um, but Kumiko's just leaving the dungeon, whereas the heroes are just going into the dungeon. I think that's a little cool. Uh, yeah. Check the position. Yeah, ag- agreed. Um... Yeah, I just like this episode. I just found Kumoko's point of view just way more entertaining. Yeah, I, I, they did do a thing with. Um, I'm trying to gauge how powerful Kumiko is compared to the, uh, to the other characters, and it seems like 
uh, what's the main guy's name? Is it Shu? I always forget his fucking name. Shun? Yeah, Shun. Um, like, Shun and, and the rest of the humans are kind of garbo. <laughs> like, they yeah. can't do shit compared to Kumiko. Because Kumiko yeah. killed that sea dragon in, like, one attack while she was yeah. fishing without thinking about it. No, at this point, she's, like, she's, she's a bitch. Yeah, she's, she, like, super OP. People. Yeah, she's super OP. But, like, Shun and them can't even, like, do anything. But Faye can kill the sea dragon in one yeah. shot, too. So, I don't know, it just kind of sucks to be a human, I guess. I'm sure they can do more. It's just Shun still young and hasn't like fought or anything and was told to not really use their skill points because mm. <laughs> they'll become like Hugo, Hugo and get and go all crazy and evil. Mm-hmm. Um even though I'm like, bitch, can you can he start using his uh, Yeah, I'd be like, Can I start using my skill points now? Yeah, like it's it's kind of important. Like we, we need them to sit to live at this point. Mm-hmm. Um. Meanwhile, Kumoko is like, I need to put my skill points into everything, or else I'll die. Yeah. By this point, I mean Kumiko is super like god tier. Like they, she, yeah, they don't stand a chance. But <laughs> I, I also like that. Hey, we finally got an answer. Demon Lord is not Kumiko because she just appeared at the end of this episode and fucking blew Kim- Kumiko the fuck up. Yeah. <laughs> or, 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 some shit happened to this. To the old demon lord, and Kumiko took her appearance. Dot dot dot. Could happen. I feel like that 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 would be a very big stretch to try to get like a plot twist, though. <laughs> I mean, how many plot twists have they put in this series already? <laughs> a couple, a few here and there. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> how many plot twists? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I think what's more likely is that Kumiko, well, Kumiko's gonna revive because she's immortal. Yeah. Demon Lord's probably gonna kill her like 15 more times until Kumiko's like, listen, how about we like work together and then we'll exactly. eventually get the, yeah. her joining as a general or something. Yeah, and then we'll see where she is in the present time. Uh... Well, I await to see that episode because I want to actually see the interactions with, uh, I like the Demon Lord. Actually, I want to see how she interacts with Kumiko. Since she's yeah. a little bit smart assy herself. Yeah. That that was a that was a weird thing that uh that she came up and just, you know blew her up. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the only reason why I'm saying like, but is that the demon lord that we know now? Because this other demon lord, she's not quick to be like like Explodey. <laughs> yeah, she seems really like bored. And yeah. she, she likes doing things. A it lot. is a it is like a fifteen year time skip, so maybe like she mellowed out. I don't know. Yeah, who who knows? So I guess we will see. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, that was Kumo Deska. This good episode. I yeah. I I. I this, it's one of the series I'm just waiting for the next episode. Just waiting for the next episode. Same. And, uh, but yeah. That, I guess that is it for our weekly review. And there's not going to be a... Um, not going to be a, a pillow arc this week. Uh, I had a very long couple of days. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I was, I was planning to watch Yasuke this week, and just, it didn't pan out, so I'm going to watch Yasuke. Well... I didn't watch it last week. I'm going to watch it this week, and then we're going to talk about it on the next episode. Yes. So, that being said, Oni, would you have to take us away? I will. Guys, if you enjoyed this episode of the GNA Podcast, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe so you catch all the episodes as they go up every week. If you haven't already, do follow us on Twitch, join the party on our Discord, and follow us on Twitter, all linked in the description down below. You can even become a member, like all these lovely people on screen right now, by clicking that join button, or uh, being a sub on Twitch, or going over to our Patreon, and you get yourself a bunch of awesome perks for that. So if that intrigues you, please become a member. Drew, do you have anything you'd like to add? Uh um it's gonna be the start of the week. Um you know, do your best. Uh just uh and face whatever job you have. <laughs> Not my job. Yes. 
and say whatever job you have and i'm sure you'll do you'll be just fine do your best i believe in you do the best job you can do yes everyone do your best job until next time this has been soberoni and we do i'm gonna catch you all later later bye